Hello and welcome to News Up Now. I'm Gleiton Martins. And this movie, I'm going to show you the trailer just in a bit, is going to move you. If you don't cry with this movie, man, you're not going to cry ever. It's very powerful, painful, beautifully done. So let's watch the trailer. says to me, we've won marriage equality. Now the fight is over. I say, wait a minute. There is a huge backlash. Just talking about the Bible anymore. Our opponents are now trying to bring in the Constitution. Ryan's faith was really genuine. He was really silly and really playful. Did lots of like silly youth group things, but he also loved Bible study and took church really seriously. It was a gradual process, but he really jumped on the bandwagon of, okay, I don't have to be gay. When I was born and for the first 21 years of my life, I was known as Tim. But the reality is, is I've always been Sarah. I've always been the girl I know I am, even if the world didn't see it at the time. The only word I can think of to explain how I felt was devastation. So in here to talk about for what they know, not what they do, the director of the movie, Daniel Kerslake. Thank you so much for being here. It's great to be here. Thank you. Yeah, for thank you so much for from Germany. Like, yeah. Amazing. And my friend Tony Capastione. I love the way he says it. <laughs> yeah, hundred dollars. So, um, so you are the director for the Brave Make a Film Festival. Uh, we, we were there a couple months ago, and you are bringing Daniel to uh, the Bay Area once again. Mm -hmm. Or is that the first time? Well, no. I met Daniel at the Frameline Film Festival here in San Francisco in June, I believe. Right. Right. June. And we watched the film with one of our programmers, Robertino, who does mm -hmm. a lot of help. Uh, oh yeah, with absolutely. Yeah, News he's with us. Now. Yeah. And I said, oh my gosh, this film is perfect for us. So we met right after the film. And I think within a few weeks after talking and emailing, it worked out that we were going to bring him here mm -hmm. to the Bay Area again in, in October. Fantastic. So what is behind the title of the movie? Before they know not what they do? Yes. Uh, well, those are some of the last words of Jesus on the cross uh, mm. in the crucifixion story. While he's up on the cross looking down at the people who are killing him, he asks God, his father, to forgive him for they know not what they do. And I, as we were looking at titles for this film, uh, it just felt like it was just actually totally perfect for what we're talking about in this movie because it's about four Christian families who have a gay or trans child and how they navigate their faith and this new reality that they've realized that God has given them something they did not expect. Mm -hmm. And uh, frankly, not all the uh, stories are uh, happy ones, uh, at least initially. Uh, and so for me, the title has kind of a double entendre. It means a couple different things. It's also the fo a follow-up to my first film, which was called For the Bible Tells Me So. Uh, which, of course, is the second line of a Christian hymn called Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Uh, and that, that title as well had uh, a double entendre because it also talked about uh, the fact that a lot of Christians uh, believe that the Bible says that gay people are condemned and evil and going to hell. And uh, I actually embraced my uh, sexual orientation as a gay man kind of because of my faith. Like your personal experience as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Coming out uh, to myself at Duke University as an undergrad, I used to go to the chapel every night as a, as a like study break. I'd be studying in the library, go to the chapel, and I'd have a conversation with God, and it really just became very clear to me that to not be who God made me to be would be the great sacrilege. So, ironically, my faith brought me out where many times it keeps people in the closet. Uh, and I, I just don't believe that that's what uh, God or the guiding spirit or the universe, however you want to call um, what you believe in, I don't think that's what that thing wants for you. It, it's, it's a really powerful topic, especially what's going on in the United States right now, which half of, pretty much half of the states is still, you still can be fired for being gay, mm -hmm. right? Which is terrible so but this movie also not only of uh, you don't not only showing the fact of being gay but also a uh, uh, trans right uh, being right. accepted by the family especially which is amazingly important for those kids for right. everybody yeah and these are very faith-filled families that at first are quite conflicted mm -hmm. when they find out that 
that they have a trans child. But as the movie goes along, we see their full arc, and uh, thankfully, uh, parents come to realize uh, through the love of their kids uh, that this is exactly what God meant, what God wanted for them, uh, and uh, they emerge very thankful uh, to have the children they have. Which is, you know, the movie's about just about family, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For me, when I talk about the film at the most basic level, it's about family, what it means to be family. Uh, I have a very hard time with parents who, because of their faith, and I use quote fingers, uh, kick out, kick their children out and are, are estranged from their children, sometimes forever. I think that's so misguided. That's such a misreading of, of who Christians uh, should be and what this being, Jesus Christ, whether you think Jesus was the Son of God or mm -hmm. a rabbi of the time or just a myth, you can't, I cannot find that in the Gospels anywhere. It makes absolutely no sense that someone would turn their back on uh, their own child based on who they are. So that's really what the film is about. Obviously, you hoping, I assume, to open up the conversation about those topics. Mm -hmm. um, how do people are reacting to the movie when they're talking to you? So we, the movie premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival yes. in April, and then we were here at Frameline in uh, June, just a, like maybe two and a half weeks ago, I was in Hong Kong for the international premiere, and now we're here at Brave Maker, which I'm totally and completely thrilled about. And honestly, the, the response has been incredibly strong and positive, and a lot of the points and ideas that we wanted to get across in the film seem to really be reading in audiences. We've had very mixed audiences as well. It hasn't been uh, strictly LGBTQ people, uh, which is also a big um, blessing because, frankly, um, I didn't make the movie primarily for my community. I made it for people who are not yet with us, people who are not yet on board with this idea of equality for all and that we are children of God just as everybody else. So uh, the, the audiences and the people in the audiences from those worlds who have seen the film, particularly Two nights ago we were in Seattle and there was a big contingency of evangelicals at that screening because there's an evangelical story in this movie. Uh, it was really powerful and fascinating and wonderful to hear their thoughts after seeing the film. Mm -hmm. People, mm -hmm. It's not an anti-religion film, it's not an anti-Christian film, it's about Christians, it's made by a Christian. So we, we've done our best to stay as sort of right down the middle as we can be so that people can make up their own minds. Well, the movie was uh, got the highest uh, rated on the Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yes, it so was far. Yeah. And what is the next step? And then we're in Redwood City tomorrow night, yes. Wednesday night. And then Sunday, I'm in Fort Lauderdale at a festival there. And then we're going to start doing some festivals abroad again. We're in Warsaw and Bologna and a number of other European-based festivals. but. Hopefully this week we're going to sign our distribution deal, which means that there'll be a company that buys the film, who puts it first in theaters, and then makes the Netflix and Amazon deal and gets it onto Phenomenal. iTunes. And makes did you have a hard time coming out? Uh, as for your parents, like did, did I? Yeah, um, yeah. I came from a, a very religious family, a Protestant family that, um, when I came out, spent the first couple of years calling my voice machine and my voicemail and leaving. Bible verses my voicemails pretty regularly, so it was tough. My parents, though, uh, last night were at a screening at a festival in Rochester. They had seen the film already, but they went kind of as my um, representative, and I Skyped in the Q&A, and uh, I talked to them this morning, and they just went on and on and on and on and on about how proud they were. and how everyone in the audience had embraced them, and so they've come a long way. Even though they still support politicians I don't support, uh, they're very amazing on, on this issue. So well, it was hard, but it got better. goes back to our, or the beginning of the show, it will get better. Right. It gets better. Right? Absolutely. So how important is for you as a, a, a um, executive director for a film festival mm -hmm. to have a film like Daniel's film? You know, Brave Maker's whole tagline is brave stories change the world, and you are that story, so live out that story. And, you know, <clears throat> as a theologian, I believe in the power of talking about like, who, like these two questions, who are we and why are we here? Right? Those are the, like, the most important two questions anybody could 
ask, answer about themselves. Who, who are you? Why are you here? And so I believe, you know, the way I see the world is that there is a divine creator. So to put those two things together, a theology, understanding of God and film, it's this perfect marriage for me. So this film, it, it just is, it's a brave maker film all the way. And so I am really excited tonight. But... And also I think the key of success is um, you, you're going to make a lot of enemies. That's just part of the package. That's reality. You know, if you're doing something that you truly believe, it's coming from your heart, just keep going. I mean, you, you know, uh, you're not going to, not, not everybody's going to like what you're going to be doing. Yeah. And, but it, oh, also, gosh, you're going to have... Like a certain story in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> God's like a certain person. Uh, you, you see, yeah. uh, I feel better then. Uh, you hey, I want to tell Daniel, too. I told them we have a podcast. We had Daniel on our podcast. Uh, and I was saying how I've grown through this movie. I have three daughters. I am parenting in a different way because of this film. Mm -hmm. I am trying, because, you know, as a hetero person, everything is in that vein for me. We ask questions in our family, like, do you have a boyfriend yet? Do you have any crushes? It's changing the way I understand how to help youth. So if he, someone who's watching us wants to find out more about the movie, uh, what is the website? The website for the film is ForTheyKnow.org, ForTheyKnow.org, and the Brave Maker website is what? BraveMaker.org. .org. .org. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Sure. Very nice meeting you. Thanks for having yeah. us. Yeah. Nice to see oh, you again. Yeah, appreciate thank you so much. Appreciate. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please send us to our email at tips at newsupnow.com, T-I-P-S at newsupnow.com. I hope to see you next time with your suggestions and comments below. Bye-bye.